One confidential evening not three months ago, Michael Zephyr told me the story of the door in the wall. And at the time, I thought that so far as he was concerned, it was a true story. But whether he himself saw or only thought he saw, whether he himself was the possessor of an unquantifiable privilege or the victim of a fantastic dream, I cannot pretend to guess. Even the facts of his death, which ended my doubts forever, threw no light on that. That much the viewer must judge for themselves. Good night, sir. And here is my hand. Good night, sir. And here is mine. Whiskey? My friend, you seem distracted. I have a preoccupation. The fact is, and it isn't a case of ghosts or apparitions, but it's an odd thing to tell off Baines. I'm haunted. I'm haunted by something that takes the light out of things fills me with longings. That is as well as I can remember my vision of that garden. The garden that haunts me still. Of course, I can convey nothing of that indescribable quality of translucent unreality. That difference from the common things of experience that hung about it all. But that is what happened. If it was a dream, it was a daytime and altogether extraordinary dream. Did you go back? No. Don't recall that I ever attempted to find the garden in those early years. I never found it again until I was 18. It leapt upon me for the second time 
as I was driving to Paddington on my way to Oxford and a scholarship. Suddenly there was the door, the wall, the dear sense of unforgettable and still attainable things. I got my scholarship, and the night I was told of that, I sat in my little upper room in my father's house with his praise, his rare praise, and his sound counsels ringing in my ears. I smoked my favourite pipe and thought of that door and the long wall. My grip was fixing now upon the world. I saw another door opening, the door of my career. Well, I have served that career. I have done much work, much hard work. But I have dreamt of that garden in a thousand dreams and seen its door, or at least glimpsed its door, four times since then. For a while, this world seemed bright and interesting. It seemed so full of meaning and opportunity that the half-effaced charm of the garden was, by comparison, gentle and remote. You see, once I was in love. Years of hard work after that, and never a sight of the door. It's only recently it's come back to me. The garden? No, the door. And I haven't gone in. Three times I've had my chance. Three times. If ever the door offers itself to me again, I swore I will go in. Out of this heath and dust, out of this dry glitter of vanity, out of these toilsome futilities, I will go and never return. This time I will stay. I swore it. And when the time came, I didn't go. I have made a great sacrifice. They all have. And the next occasion was as I rushed to my father's bedside to bid that stern old man farewell. And then, too, the claims of life were imperative. But the third time was different. It happened a week ago. My position in the reconstructed ministry lay just beyond the boundary of discussion. I was keenly anxious to get some definite word from Gurkha, but was hampered by Ralph's presence. I had to wait until Ralph would leave us at North Street then I could surprise Gurkha with a sudden frankness. One has sometimes to resort to these little devices. Here I am, and my chance has gone from me. Three times in one year the door has been offered to me. That door that leads into peace, into delight, into a beauty beyond dreaming, kindness no man on earth can know. And I've rejected it, Baines. And it has gone. How do you know? I know. I'm left now to work it out. To stick to the tasks that held me here when my moments came. You say I have success. This envied, irksome, tawdry, vulgar thing. I have it. if that was my success. <laughs>